Welcome to Titan Video. We're visiting with head the men's basketball coach entering his ninth season, Bob Burton. Last year, a losing record, something you're not too familiar with, not comfortable with, but you kind of bit the bullet and paid a price. Scholarships to players who couldn't help you this year, but now it looks like you're going to pay some benefits. Yeah, I, I sure hope we're right on that, Mel. We, we knew that a year ago at this time that it was going to be a tough situation. Uh, we had had, we lost uh, two really great players in graduation, and we had uh, th uh, two other players that decided not to come back. So all of a sudden there was four out of five kids gone. And we had these three scholarships and then three transfers became eligible that we thought were really high level. So we decided to go that way, and which I think is really going to pay off this year. Let's talk about the three. Two come as a kind of a package deal from Cal. So you got two Pac-10 athletes, well, Pac-12 athletes now, Omandi Hamoki and uh, DJ Seeley. Let's talk about them, their talents. Yeah, they're absolutely terrific. Uh, Omandi Hamoki is a, a great player, started for Cal. And uh, I, I think he's going to be actually uh, one of the best players in the Big West. I, I think he's got that ability. I, a great example is last year in, in the uh, preseason NIT when he was at Cal. He had 15 rebounds against Ohio State at Madison Square Garden. So it gives you an uh, idea of what kind of athlete he is and the size. Uh, just a terrific player. We've only got him for one year, but I can't tell you how excited we are to have him. And then DJ Seeley was one of the top 50 in the country out of high school from Modesto Christian High School uh, and uh, committed to Cal very early, heavily recruited kid, played a lot for Cal and uh, decided to come with Amandi, so we, we got two absolutely terrific players there. And then the third one is a kid named Kwame Vaughn, who came from University of San Francisco, and Kwame was their second leading scorer. Really outstanding talent, can really shoot it strong, good defensive player, uh, had great success at USF, so we feel we're really uh, fortunate to have all three of those transfers. And last year they were able to practice with the team, although Amandi had some shoulder problems, what did you see in practice that you maybe you didn't know you were getting from game film or from their previous careers? Well, it was really funny. He practiced with us all the way up until October with one arm. And uh, we knew it was sore, but we didn't know the degree that it, his shoulder was 70% torn. And when they went in for surgery, that's what they came back with. So it was a, a real blow for him because he really wanted to work on some things, especially his perimeter game. Uh, for him to play at the next level, that's something he's going to have to really keep working on and develop. But he gave us a glimpse of how incredibly gifted he is just in the short time he was here with, with one arm. And now you have six players back, three starters. Let's just kind of go down by experience. Oren Chin, he's your only two-year letterman, but he may um, have a little position change. Yeah, Orrin, uh, you know, is very effective at the four. He's just an incredible uh, four man. Last year we played him at the three. Uh, he, uh, we, we were really short in our perimeter. And uh, he, he uh, did a great job there, but it was a real adjustment for him. And I still think he can do that. I think he can work on that and develop more on, on the perimeter. But where he is incredible is at the four because he's a hard matchup. He's big enough, he's strong enough to guard fours but it's really, he's, a, he's a nightmare for them to guard because he bounces it so good, he can shoot it, and he's really athletic. So uh, I expect him to really have a terrific year for us. Your point guard, Perry Webster, played almost the whole season. Uh, talk about Perry. Perry's terrific. He's an absolute winner, uh, really runs a team. He's a true point guard in that he understands what point guards are supposed to do. He's going to be a coach someday. There's no doubt about it. He'll be a great coach, and he just carries that right over. He's playing better now than he played all last year, which most kids usually do, and no matter whether you come out of high school after a year or junior college, the adjustment's big. And Perry, uh, we couldn't have ran an offense without him last year. He was terrific, so we expect him to have a great year for us. Forward Andre Hardy missed the non-conference schedule last year with an injury. It turns out he played the conference basically on one foot. Uh, he's about ready to go 100% now. Yeah, it's kind of like the Amani Amoki thing because he uh, played last year. He missed so much of the season because he had a uh, tear in his ankle and had surgery on it. And then he missed all the preseason, literally came back in late December, didn't practice and just played and played great. And then all of a sudden kind of hit a wall and we found out he had the same problems as the other ankle. And they went in and it literally looked like uh, opening up a shark, you know, where they pull the, the license plates out. <laughs> or he had like everything in that ankle. So he's had both of them totally repaired. He is just coming back now, and I'll be really excited to see if he stays healthy 
how what he can do because he's a he's a true warrior. He had a rare freshman in the program last year, kind of unknown, coming out of the state of Washington. But you think he may be one of the best players in the league by the time he's done uh, Zeke Isaiah Yumapig. Yeah, he's a special player, and he's a combination that can play two players. We have three kids that can really play the point, and he's one of them. Uh, eventually in his career, he'll be focusing right in on that position. Right now, uh, we really need his scoring, and I love I love him shooting the ball. He's a great shooter. Uh, he's way more mature, obviously, after one year. I think he's going to be an outstanding uh, player for us this year. And then uh, down the line, I think he's going to be one of the great players to play at Fullerton. Orlando Brown last year, uh, undersized power forward due to injuries early in the season. He kind of was a surprise player for you last year, wasn't he? Yeah, he, he did a great job. We recruited him as a wing and a backup point, and he ended up playing the four for us <laughs> at times because we had so many injuries and we're down so bad. And he was all phenomenal. And then he came in and really understood his role, which is, rebounding and defending and taking it at guys and and uh, he gives us great great support in there he's going to be in there battling to play and uh, I, I think he's going to be have a really a good year and people are going to be surprised to see how much improvement he's made. Cedric Martin didn't play a lot of minutes last year but he's really your most experienced letterman big guy inside what's his role this year? Yeah same thing he's going to you know this is you know so we're going through all these players I think the key thing is you can see we have a lot of depth and that's what I'm really, really excited about it. And Cedric is another one of them. He's a kid that has lost uh, up to 40 pounds and is just moving uh, beautifully and his game has really improved and he's really become kind of a little bit more on the perimeter uh, and done an outstanding job on bouncing the ball, running the court. Uh, and I think he's gonna be battling right in there to, to get some great minutes for us. The only true newcomer you know you're going to have is Bernard Webb, a big body a junior college transfer from Salt Lake Community College. What's his strengths? Yeah, his, Bernard's been a problem for him. He literally hasn't played in two years, and it's because of injuries. He's been back-to-back -back injuries uh, where he's, you know, he hasn't been just out for two years, but he came back for a short time last year, and then he broke his foot. He had a stress fracture in his foot, so he played six games. That's all he played in the whole year. The year before, he was injured also. So it's really a, it taken him a long time to get back in it. He's really getting in great shape. He really works hard. He's got a massive body. He's really strong, and he really is competitive and plays hard. And it's going to take him a while to keep going, but I think in time uh, he's going to be a tremendous contributor to us, and uh, I'm really glad that he's here. A big question mark, the emphasis on big, six foot ten transfer from Missouri, John Underwood. He's been appealing it as a hardship to be eligible this season as opposed to waiting until next year. I know it's been an ongoing deal. Any news? Not yet. The only thing we know is that they've opened up his case. We'd heard that. So we're anxiously waiting to hear from him. And if they if his appeal goes through and he's eligible to this to play this year, well, he would add a lot to our team. I mean obviously he's six he's six ten, really athletic, long, can run. Uh, going to be very good. Just needs to add strength. If he can't play, then a redshirt year would be great for him too, where he's got a chance to really sit out and get stronger. That's the only thing that he needs to do. And uh, then he's going to be a special player at the end of his time at Fullerton because we just don't get 6'10 kids that can run like him and that are like him. So he, he's got a chance to really be an impact player in this conference. Speaking of red shirts, you got two more incoming that they have to sit out. Sammy Yeager from TCU, Alex Harris from Northeastern. Uh, talk about those two new players. Well, Sammy Yeager is probably the most talented player that we have. I think our guys would probably tell you that. There's The talent level in him is incredible. It's just off the charts. Uh, he's a next level guy, and he's, you know, he's got to you know, really show us that, you know, that he's dedicated to make it because you know, he's had a few problems bouncing around, but he is a terrific talent, a great kid. He's done everything that we've asked him to do. Uh, we're really excited to have him here, and I hope things really work out for him because if he does, he is a, uh, he's a player that will be an impact player. Uh, he reminds me of Ralphie Holmes, a kid that I had my second year here uh, that was a great player, one of the greatest Titans of, of all time. And uh, I only coached Ralphie for a semester, but this kid uh, has got that kind of ability, so he's going to be great. Alex Harris is another player that's outstanding, uh, really athletic, quick, jumps. Uh, really excited to watch him this year. Unfortunately, he's come down with the same problem that Monty has, and he's got a torn shoulder. So we'll know this week whether he has to have surgery, which way they anticipate he's probably going to have surgery, and he'll be out 
in the same situation that Amandi was. So it's a real blow for him, but also there's no better time for him to have that or Amandi last year when they weren't eligible to play. So they miss playing and all of those and improving, but as far as timing for eligibility, it's really a great time for them to have that happen. Through your career at Fullerton, you've had a lot of transfers come in. Your junior college career, you're always rebuilding a roster. So team chemistry is always important. You're used to dealing with newcomers. How are the players reacting with this kind of unusual mix of players? Yeah, better than ever. And uh, we, you know, we've done a lot on that. They, they've really mixed in good. And you know, the key thing is that the three kids that redshirted here last year were here. So they were practicing with it. So it wasn't like they just showed up. The two new, the other new kids coming in are really fit and good because <clears throat> the other kids all kind of know how they feel because they were all transfers. Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of a cycle thing for us. So they all really understand it. We do a great job with kids that do that. Uh, so the, the, the chemistry is really good. But the most important thing, I, I think, and chemistry is one of the real key things to how good you're going to be, but it's competition. And that's the key. They all know that they really cannot step backwards because there's really a good player chipping away right at their heels. So I think that's what's really going to add for the success for this season. Offensively, you like to play up-tempo. I assume that's the same uh, plan this year? Yeah, play faster than we've ever played. And uh, they're kind of buying into that. They're still not playing as fast as I want to because that always involves getting in shape. <laughs> you know? So every kid in the world says, hey, I want to run. And until you get them in there and say, OK, well, you, don't, you just don't say you want to run and think about it. Now you're in shape. Uh, you can't fake being in shape. You're either, you are in it or aren't. But we, we plan to really play at a, a, probably as fast as tempo as we've ever played, especially with the depth, because we'll have fresher guys in there, and also uh, defensively, more pressure. And we haven't been good defensively, and that's where the real emphasis is. Offensively is not going to be a problem. We've got kids that can really score at every position, really skilled, good size. You've got all that. It's if we're going to win and really have the success that we want to have, we're going to have to play great defense. and. We'll see if they buy into that part of it when, it really, when you need to show that you're doing it. Last year, it seemed like three-point uh, shooting defense was a problem. Is that uh, part of the big de defensive scheme, or was that just kind of a fluke? Or last, that, how, how do you work on that? Last part, last season, inside was a problem. Three-point shooting was a problem. We had a lot of problems on that thing. But obviously, the biggest problem was our lack of depth and wearing it out. But uh, I, no, I think uh, last year we kind of, because of the, the team we had, we kind of stayed on our heels and played a lot of zone, played man because we couldn't afford to go as much as we wanted and couldn't afford foul problems. This year with this depth problem, uh, we should eliminate that. I, I don't think that's going to be an issue because we're going to be pressuring a lot more on the perimeter. The schedule, you play a lot of schools, uh, it seems like a lot of non conference that you haven't played before, Wichita State, Utah. Uh, Houston Baptist, Nickel State, is that just coincidental or are you trying to look for some different kind of uh, op opposition? Well, you know, really scheduling is so crazy anyway, and it's about who you can get in the time. Uh, obviously, we're not in situations like the big schools that have the budgets to go out and buy eight games and schedule them at home. We don't do any of that kind of thing. We get, we get a couple division t uh, two level teams that we get to play, which are always fun for us. Uh, but the real thing is, uh, you know, Utah, we thought it, it's it, Utah and Wichita State are money games for our school. And Wichita State's going to be one of the better teams in the country. They'll be a top 20 team that's favored to win their conference. Utah's a parental, a parental uh, champion, not a, cha not a champion, but a big time program. They're going through a little bit of a, a change there. Uh, <clears throat> but in the past, we've always gone and played USC's and Arizona's and UCLA's. And it's kind of where we could go. I always liked playing somebody in Southern California like that, but we couldn't get a game this year. Uh, the last year, they were all lined up to play us so all. <laughs> it changed a little bit. Uh, so I think people, like, scheduling was a little hard this year because people knew we had the three kids sitting out and we had all those other kids coming back and that potentially we could be really a dangerous team. And when you're paying that kind of money out, you, you don't want to have a, you know, you don't want that. You want to you get a game that you, you're, you can really celebrate with. In conference, you're locked in the home and home, so you know who you're going to play yeah. year in and year out. Looks like Santa Barbara and Long Beach uh, got pretty much everyone back from the teams that won the tournament in the regular season last year. But you think the league may be as a whole stronger than ever? Well, the league is, is the best that it's been uh, balanced wise since I've been in, in nine years. I think maybe the level of the league was maybe a little bit better when I came in because you had Utah State, 
UOP was a nationally ranked team. Santa Barbara was really good. I mean, there was there was great players, so I don't want to take it away. But you've got Long Beach State in it that won the league last year with four starters back. Uh, they're going to be a top 20 team in the country. Santa Barbara beat them in the tournament to go. He's got his best ever team at Santa Barbara. So right there off the bat, they're picked for one and two, and everybody just talks about them. And then at the third spot, I think we're mentioned a lot with Cal Poly. And Cal Poly is going to be really good. It's the best team that they've had since I've been in there. Uh, Riverside's hugely improved. They're going to be really, they're going to be good. Uh, Northridge is always tough. And, and I'm not even talking about a team that's dominated this league, UOP. And they brought in eight new players. And they have a real clue what they're doing there. So I, I think the league is going to be every night in and out. It's going to be kind of like a, the ACC was for so many years uh, with uh, a couple really good teams in there like Duke and Carolina, but knowing that anybody else can, can cause problems and win. Last question, kind of off the beaten path, but if you had a magic wand, what kind of rule changes would you make in college basketball? You know, I, I think the game is great, and uh, I, I love the way it is right now. I don't think you have to do a lot with it. I think that's why the success is uh, the way it is. Uh, uh, first thing, I, I wish I had a magic wand and I could change NCAA rules. <laughs> <laughs> Not talking about those. I'm talking about I the court. Throw those in, I'll be I'm getting all kinds of problems there with the NCAA rules. I, I, and I could limit that to three, three, three magic wands. But the game itself, uh, I would say probably, I would, would, I'd love to see it go to 24-second rule. Uh, the women are ahead of us on that. I think they're 30, you 30. know. And, and uh, I, we like to play fast. It's our style. I think that's the way the game should be played. I played it different ways, but I think that moving it down to 24 seconds would be really good. I also think the foul situations, instead of five, make it six. I think people want to see the best players on the floor. There's too many questionable calls on players all the time that can get them out of it. I think that's one thing. And I think the third one is they should lighten up the, uh, the fight rule. Uh, right now, they've gone overboard on that. We had a kid who literally just shot his arm through to get a guy's hand off him last year and they accused him of a punch and it was a ridiculous call and he missed the, that, the rest of that game and the next game and it really affected us. Uh, and I think that they're too overboard on that, uh, that part because I think everybody's got a pretty good idea on trying to limit the fighting and that type of activity uh, compared to the way it used to be. So I would say probably those three things. Coach Burton, thanks for your time. Stay healthy. Good luck in 2011-2012. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, we just, uh, we're looking forward to it. I think this is, hopefully this is going to be a really great year for us. Thank you.